Hello everybody. Hope all of you are well. And in my last class, I have completed the organic compounds containing nitrogen. Today I will start a new chapter that is biomolecules. Biomolecules. Uh, first we will start the carbohydrates. Carbohydrates can be defined as polyhydroxy aldehydes or ketones they are optically active and why they are called biomolecules because these molecules constitute uh, from living organism and help them grow and provide energy to work so maximum time okay whatever we are taking that is uh, maximum uh, amount is that carbohydrate okay and the, from this carbohydrate glucose we are getting the energy by uh, breaking this molecule okay we will get the by respiration we are, we are getting energy for work now carbohydrates so our topic is carbohydrate that i am writing carbohydrates carbohydrates okay now carbohydrates are classified uh, in different categories first we can write according to their unit okay monosaccharide disaccharide or oligosaccharide okay polysaccharides so depending upon the product of the hydrogen now what is called monosaccharides so we can write it monosaccharide mono saka monosaccharides next one we can tell that oligosaccharides another we can tell that polysaccharides now the question is what is called monosaccharides these are the compounds okay which do not break into more simpler compounds okay on hydrolysis they are called monosaccharides suppose we can think about the uh, glyceraldehyde glyceraldehyde structure will be like this cho hoh and ch2h this is a glyceraldehyde and monosaccharide glyceraldehyde and these uh, carbohydrates okay also called aldotriols why aldehyde group is there there is an aldo and three carbon atom is there that is called triols so this is also called aldotriols another we can think uh another we can think that uh the dihydroxy acetone their keto functional group is present in this carbohydrate this is also monosaccharide so this is ch2 oh dihydroxy acetone and what will be the name of this compound the name of this compound will be here that uh, this is called keto triolch keto triolch okay and here we are not giving any carbon because this is fissile position formula here also you can write carbon no problem but here always when you are writing in this way okay that means there is some carbon atom okay and uh, here this is keto triols here also three carbon atom is there as keto functional group is present and three carbon atom that is why it is called keto triols others we can tell that uh, the most famous monosaccharide okay that we are using that is the glucose glucose structure will be like this cho choh C H O H C O H 
H C H O H and C H two H. This one is called glucose. And its formula is C six H twelve O six. All of you know. This is also called aldohexose. Aldohexose. Why is this called aldohexose? Because aldehyde group is there. And total six carbon atoms is there. Okay, that is why it is called aldohexose. Now another ketohexose. If you want to write fructose, maybe ketohexose. Fructose structure will be here. CH two H is there. Then there will be one ketone group. Okay. So this ketone, okay, uh, is indicating this one is fructose. And here is the aldehyde group. That is the basic difference between the fructose and uh, glucose. And the molecular formula in both cases are same C six H twelve O six. Okay, so next one is C H O H. Then there will be C O H H. Then there will be C O H H. And there is C H two. Next C H two H. So this one is called fructose. And this is also ketohexose. Okay. Again, I am telling that here keto group is present, and here six carbon atom is present. That is why it is called keto hexo. This uh, fructose, glucose, okay, glycerol dehyde, okay. These are all monosaccharides. Next, we will discuss oligosaccharides. Oligosaccharides are the carbohydrates, okay, or compounds. Which gives two to nine monosaccharides. Okay, uh, and uh, monosaccharides molecules on the uh, acidic hydrolysis. Suppose if we think about one disaccharide. Suppose uh, this is also oligosaccharide. This is called sucrose. Sucrose formula we know that C12 H22O11. Now here if we do the acid hydrolysis reaction, that means If we give HCO plus and apply heat, then there will be formation of two compounds. One will be glucose, another will be fructose. So in this compound, two monosaccharides are present. Okay, that is glucose and fructose. That is why this one is called disaccharide. Hope you can understand. Okay, and this is also called as from two to nine. Monosaccharides molecules are called uh, on acidic hydrolysis called uh, oligosaccharides. So this is also oligosaccharides. Next we can think about raffinose. R A W F I N O S. Raffinose is a trisaccharide compound. Its formula is C eighteen H thirty two O sixteen. Okay. So in this case. If you hydrolyze by acid, okay, you will get three monosaccharide molecules, okay, on hydrolysis. That is why it is also called a trisaccharide. Next, we will discuss polysaccharide. Polysaccharides, uh, these compounds give a very large number of monosaccharide molecules on acidic hydrolysis. We can think about cellulose. We can think about starch. If we write the formula of cellulose, then you can understand it is C six H ten. O5 polen. This is the structure of the cellulose compound. Okay, so this is called polysaccharide. Here, if we uh, hydrolyze it, then we will get n numbers of C6H12O6 glucose molecule. Okay. Hope you can understand. If we write the starch, also same thing. Okay, both structure formula is same. Okay, now on hydrolysis we are getting a, a large number of monosaccharide molecules. Okay, or monosaccharide units. That is why they are called polysaccharides. Next, we will discuss that another classification of carbohydrates. That carbohydrates can be classified. Into sugar and non-sugar. Now, what are called sugar? These are the sweet crystalline, the carbohydrates that having the sweet taste or sweet crystalline solid, and those which are soluble in water. 
okay they are called sugars okay so carbohydrates classified into sugars and non sugar carbohydrates sugars example we can give that are sweet in taste that is glucose fructose sucrose glucose fructose sucrose these are sugars and there are some carbohydrate molecules okay they, they are not crystalline sugars generally they are crystalline these are not crystalline they are amorphous and they are also tasteless they have no sweet taste okay and they are tasteless solids and they are also insoluble in water this type of compounds are called non sugar okay non sugar carbohydrate compounds okay we can take the examples of starch and cellulose starch cellulose these are the non sugar part next another classification is there carbohydrates that there may be some reducing uh, carbohydrate or reducing sugar and there may be some non reducing sugar so carbohydrates again we can classify that reducing reducing sugars and another is non reducing sugars non reducing sugars now all of you know about the tollens reagent and phelins reagent tollens reagent uh, containing silver okay and phelins reagent containing copper when uh, when you add some carbohydrate and apply heat with this tollens reagent if there is silver precipitation actually uh, in the tollens reagent okay Uh, silver is in the plus one state it is going to the zero state okay that means reduction of the tollens reagent by this carbohydrate and in case of phenyl solution uh, there is cu2 plus when it will reduce to cu plus one and there will be formation of uh, red ppt of cu2o okay then uh, we will get the positive phenyl test so carbohydrates which reduces tollens reagent and phenyl uh, solution they are called reducing sugars which do not reduce these reagents that means tollens reagent and uh, the phelin solution or phelin reagents they are called non reducing sugar okay that means when if we add some carbohydrate in phelin solution we are heating and if we get a red precipitation degrade precipitation of cu2o that means this is reducing sugar okay if there is no change in the color okay it is not forming red ppt of cu2o that means it is non reducing sugar hope you hope you can understand generally all monosaccharides are reducing carbohydrates okay and all disaccharides all disaccharides except sucrose okay they are also reducing carbohydrates sucrose starch cellulose glycogen these are non reducing sugar that you have to understand again i will discuss this reactions also next we will discuss one important thing uh, that is the dl nomenclature or dl configuration in case of carbohydrate dl configuration dl configuration if we write one structure then you can easily understand that is cho Writing C H O H whole thrice, then C H O H is in the right side, then C H two H. So in this case, this is actually the structure of glucose. Now the question is whether it is D glucose or this one is L glucose. Okay. So when this O H group, okay, O H group of that carbon atom. okay adjacent to this ch2h group that means that chiral center uh, bottom chiral center okay this one is 1 this one is 2 3 4 4 5 5 okay this five carbon atom so when the o h group of the carbon atom adjacent to this ch2h group lies on the right hand side here it is lies on the right hand side okay in the pisa projection formula 
then the monosaccharide is called d glucose this one is called d glucose i am not saying that this one is dextrorotary this is not dextrorotary may may not it may be dextrorotary but this d is not indicating this one is dextrorotary or liverotary okay or it is not liverotary okay so this is only simply the nomenclature if the which uh, when we are writing the fischer friction formula in case of glucose if the which uh, the bottom which that means uh, having the chiral center uh, adjacent to this ch2 which in the right hand side then we are calling it d now they are also may be l glucose if this this one is the left hand side cho chohh whole thrice then coh and h ch2h so this one if it is in the left hand side then this is called l glucose okay so in case of carbohydrate we have to consider that the bottom which okay that bottom chiral center which whether it is in the right side or left side if it is right side then we are calling it d and if it is the left side then we are calling l suppose in case of glyceraldehyde also we can write that d glyceraldehyde and l glyceraldehyde this one is this one is the d glyceraldehyde and when we are writing this one as o it is the left hand side so it is called l glyceraldehyde so in this way we can easily uh, give the dl nomenclature okay next one we will discuss that glucose uh, that is the natural occurring glucose this is alpha d glucose and its aqueous solution is dextrorotary okay so that is why this glucose that means alpha d glucose this this type of natural glucose okay natural occurring glucose they are called dextrose as it is rotating the plane of the plane by right the clockwise next we will discuss how glucose is prepared first process we can discuss that preparation from sucrose that is c12 h22o11 sucrose okay it is generally coming from sugar cane all of you know then we are giving this acid hydrolysis if we apply heat definitely there will be formation of glucose and fructose C six H twelve O six both formula is same. This is glucose. Last there will be formation of C six H twelve O six. This fructose. Just now I have discussed the structures. Now how to separate? On cooling, glucose is less soluble and it will precipitate from the solution. Okay, and the fructose uh, will remain in the solution. so on cooling glucose is less soluble and then fructose and we can easily separate uh, this glucose fructose uh, mixture by filtration technique next we will discuss another method of preparation of glucose the next process we can discuss that uh, from starch okay already we have discussed okay from starch we can prepare starch formula you know that c6h10o5 whole n c6 H10O5 pollen. Now uh, here also we are giving water and H plus, and we are applying heat. Here also n numbers of glucose will be formed. So this is another process generally done in industry. Okay, this is the starch. We are preparing glucose. Okay. and generally trees are uh, forming that glucose by photosynthesis that also you know okay by the help of uh, chlorophyll okay chlorophyll next we will discuss the physical properties okay the glucose uh, compounds are generally white crystalline solid and its melting point will be around 146 uh, degree centigrade and it is generally soluble in water and sweet in taste next we will discuss the chemical properties 
of glucose. Chemical properties. Chemical properties first we will discuss the reaction with acetyl chloride. Suppose this one is glucose. Hold for CH2H. Now here we have to give that acetyl chloride at 5 OH is 3. So 5 acetyl chloride molecule is required and that will produce CHO, CHO, CO, CH3 and here also CH2O, CO, CH3. Hold for. Okay. Hold for. Okay. So this compound we can tell as glucose pentaacetate. Glucose pentaacetate. Thus there will be formation of plus 5 HCl. Okay. So this is the acetylation reaction. Okay. Of glucose. Next one we will discuss that reaction with PCL5. Reaction of glucose with PCL5 that means we are writing CHO CHOH whole 4 CH2OH plus PCL5 as 5 which is 3 so you have to write 5 PCL5 that will produce CHO CHCL whole 4 CH2Cl plus 5PCL3 sorry 5PCL3 so from here plus uh, ACL will also form now here what we are observing here ok we are observing that one molecule glucose is reacting with uh, 5 moles of uh, 5 molecules of the PCL5 and they are formation of uh, glucose pentachloride this is glucose pentachloride ok Next, we will discuss reaction with HCl. Glucose reaction with HCl. That means CHO is reacting with plus HCl that will form CHCl. OH CH OH whole 4 CH 2 OH just like aliate that sorry will be HCN HCN hydrocyanic acid okay addition okay so here we are getting that glucose cyanohydrate this is glucose cyanohydrate hope you can understand then reaction with hydroxyl acid so this will react with NH2OH. Okay. Then there will be formation of oxygen. So it will form HC double bond NOH. And there will be formation of the same CHOH whole 4 CH2OH. And it is forming glucose oxygen. With uh, NH2OH. Okay. With NH2OH. It is forming glucose and oxygen uh, and glucose oxygen and there will be formation of H2O. Next reaction we will discuss that oxidation reaction. Oxidation. Glucose on oxidation with bromine water or any mild oxidizing agent gives the gluconic acid while glucose with reaction with the strong oxidizing agent like concentrate nitric acid will give saccharic acid okay so now i am writing this cho chOH whole 4 ch2oh first we are giving the mild oxidizing agent bromine water there will be oxidation 
this CH will be convert to acid group. And the name of the compound is gluconic acid. Gluconic acid. But when we are giving the strong oxidizing agent like concentrated nitric acid, then there will be formation of saccharic acid. CWH, CHOH whole 4, CWH. Okay. And this one is called saccharic acid. That is dicarboxylic acid form. Now when mild oxidizing agent is formed in acid. Next we will discuss some reduction reaction. Generally, here we are using red phosphorus and HI. If you take glucose, if you use HI and red phosphorus, then what will happen? Uh, this will convert to hexane, N hexane. That is CH3, CH2 whole 4, CH3. That is N hexane. But if you here add nickel hydrogen, then this CHO2 will be reduced to alcohol. Then you will get CH2OH, CHOH whole 4, CH2OH. And what will be the name of this compound? This is called sorbitol. Sorbitol. Okay. Next, we will discuss the reducing properties of glucose. Glucose will reduce the tolerance agent and ferrinse agent. So, before that, we have to tell about tolerance agent. Uh, for preparation of tolerance agent, we have to take uh, silver nitrate solution. Then, we have to add one to drops of sodium hydroxide solution. When we add sodium dioxide solution, there will be formation of uh, silver hydroxide precipitate or Ag2. Okay, then we'll add uh, the whole solution will turn to uh, dirty color. Okay, dirty uh, blackish color. Okay, or dirty brownish color. Now we we'll have to add uh, ammonium hydroxide dilute drop by drop until we get a just clear solution. Understand? So this solution is called tolerance reagent. Actually it is AgNH3 whole twice plus and OH minus. Okay. And here silver is in the plus one state. Whenever you will add glucose to this solution, definitely there will be formation that the glucose will convert to uh, acid. Okay. And silver plus will reduce to silver. And if you look at the inner side of the glass, uh, test tube, then you will Observe shiny silver mirror. Okay, so uh, that means glucose is reducing the tolerance test. And for failing solution, failing solution is a mixture of failing solution A and failing solution B. Now, what is failing solution A? Failing solution A is that uh, copper sulfate solution, and another is the rocky dissolved solution. Rocky dissolved is sodium potassium tartrate. Okay. Now when we mix these two uh, things, alkaline solution also, uh, that sodium, uh, uh, that is rotting salt is alkaline solution of, uh, uh, solution B is the uh, alkaline solution of rotting salt. Now when you mix these two compounds, there will be uh, alkaline Cu2 plus, okay, this is called fading solution. If you add um, the glucose molecule, okay, uh, with this fading solution, you apply heat, and uh, finally, so it will change its color from blue to green to yellow to big red color. Okay, so finally, you will get a red precipitation or big red precipitation of CO2. So, in this way, you can do the uh, test. Okay, by this test, if this test gives positive, that means you can tell that your carbohydrate or sugar molecule is the reducing sugar. So, reduction of tolerance reagent. 
रिडक्शन ऑफ टॉलरेंस डिजिट तो फर्स्ट वी आर एडिंग दैट ग्लूकोज मॉलिक्यूल Now here we are adding the tollens reagent. That is twice Ag NH three whole twice plus three OH minus. Okay. Hope you can understand. Now if you add this and apply heat to this, so this will convert into uh, glycomate ion. That is CWO minus CHOH. Whole four CH two H and this silver will be precipitated. Okay, there will be formation of silver metal. There silver is plus one state. Here is zero state. Plus twice H two. So this is called Tollens test. Now reduction of ferrous reduction of Ferrous reagent. So here also we we'll take the glucose molecule. Then we have to add the ferrous reagent. That is the fifty part fifty fifty mixture of ferrous solution A and ferrous solution B. That is twice Cu two plus plus five OH minus. Then it will convert also glycomate ion. This C double minus C H O H whole four C H two O H plus the other formation of C U two. That is the brick red PPT. Brick red PPT. Brick red PPT of C U two will be formed, and also there will be formation of thrice one. So by By this test, you can easily tell if one sugar is responding uh, or forming silver mirror or forming the brick red PPT. Okay, that means definitely the sugar is the reducing sugar. And we have already discussed the structure of the glucose. Again, I am discussing the structure of the glucose because it is in your syllabus. Structure of glucose and fructose. Structure of glucose. C H O, C H O H, C H O H. Now here you see that here these centers are called chiral centers. We have already told that carbonyl molecules are optically active, so four chiral centers are there. These are also called asymmetric these are also called asymmetric carbon or asymmetric center. Okay. And next, uh, we can able to write the. Uh, Fructose also fructose there will be one CO group here. Okay, now there may be also cyclic structure in case of glucose. In spite of this aldehyde group, okay, uh, if we want to do the test, that is the keto um, group test. Okay, that is carbonyl group test. That is two four TNP test. Or if we want to react it with sodium bisulfide, ammonia, seed base. Okay. Uh, it will not generally respond. Okay, you are not getting the positive results. Okay, this is because of the uh, formation of cyclic compound. Actually, what is happening here? These OH will uh, cyclize with this aldehyde group. Okay, and there will be formation of stereoisomeric form. Two stereoisomeric form. One is called alpha D glucose. Another is called Beta D glucose. Okay, I am writing the structure. Then you can easily understand.
so total number of carbon is 1 2 3 4 5 6 six carbon is there so this cyclic structure is called alpha b glucose hope you can understand and another is there this oh will be in the left side they are always in the equilibrium state okay the right side is oh will be left side These structures you have to practice. This type of questions actually you know now given by board. But for learning it is very much important. From here one important question I will discuss. And here which is in the uh, left side this is called beta D glucose. Okay. And uh, and uh, we can draw some cyclic structure that is called Howard projection formula. Cyclic structure of glucose can also be uh, represented. Okay, actually here the one ring is formed. That ring is called that pyranose, glucopyranose. So this one we can tell that this is alpha D glucopyranose. If we write in the ring form, then you can easily understand. One form I am writing so that you can easily understand. This is the oxygen and here you see this one is the carbonate 1, this one is the 2. So here also this one is the 1 and this one is the 2. Okay. Now this is the H, OH. H, OH. Hope you can understand. Next this H will be here, OH will be here. Next again H is here, OH is here. Hope you can understand the structure. Next CH2O it is there and one H will be there. Okay. So this structure is for alpha D glucopyranose. Alpha D glucopyranose. In the similar way, just if we uh, change this OH position, OH will be the top and H will be at the bottom, then it is called beta D glucopyranose. And they are this alpha and beta form, they are um, dash two isomer and as a C1 center uh, there is only change in the configuration that the uh, structure is different and they are also called anomers. Okay, hope you can understand.